Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. So I call the Marriott Supervisor meeting to order. The time is now 7.05 p.m. First I Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd ask that everyone please rise. Yep. Also, for everyone with awareness, we are supporting the meetings, we're audio and video so that they can be saved and posted on YouTube for later viewing. Uh, we ask that everyone please silence your cell phones just so that we don't have to flow the meeting. Our first uh, housekeeping minute is to approve the minutes of June 22nd's uh, workshop meeting. Um, no. I've run it, but I don't see that I'm on the table. It's not, yeah. So I'm gonna we're gonna table that until the next meeting. Same thing with the approvals of minutes for the June 27th Board of Supervisors meeting, the July 20th workshop meeting, July 25th Board of Supervisors meeting. We'll move that to the next meeting. Treasurer's report. Do you have anything that you'd like to send out for bring up? No. Okay. <laughs> the only thing that I I forgot to pilot. Sorry. The only thing that I want to bring up is an agenda. It's yeah. budget season. Right? Yes. So. We'll be discussing the budget um, in for TCL at the next month's meeting, October's meeting, especially at the workshop. So if anyone's very interested, please come to that. Okay. Um, next is the comments. So we're going to do this slightly different than normal. Um, I know there's a number of people from Stonecroft in the audience, and we actually we have some good news for you. We have some potential dates, and based on the fact that we do have some potential dates for that special meeting, we are going to defer comments tonight just for the sake of time and, and conciseness to that special meeting. Um, the dates that uh, Colin let me know about are uh, either the 14th of October, the 25th of October, or the 7th of November. All three of those dates have mutual availability between the townships, professional services, and landmarks attorney. What are uh, the 14th of October, okay. the 24th of October, and November the 7th? That some of those dates work well. I was going to say so. Right. We'll, be, we'll be hammering that out in terms of availability amongst the supervisors. I'm available all those dates. I agree is I'm available some of those dates. State. As long as the secretary has one of those dates, that would be what we, we advertise. Hold it up, and we just have to make sure that we nail down a venue, whether it's one of the local churches or the fire or the school, the school or yeah. whatever the situation is. But that's that's where we stand on that. Is we have some dates, we have availability of landmark to be there, and we can get everybody at the table at the same time. Is landmark going to be there or just a return? Uh, that's a good question, and uh, we can certainly ask about that. The bare minimum, their attorney will be there. Okay, which means we should probably bring an attorney. I, I, you're right, you're yes. right. so, I can't. Your, that's your that's your choice. Yeah, I can't advise you on that. Yeah, yeah. So I will make a motion to hold a uh, set the date or not set the date. Schedule, the schedule, schedule, and uh, schedule and advertise a special meeting on one of those three days. <laughs> I'll make a motion to schedule and advertise for either October 14th, October 24th, or November 7th uh, for the board to consider and potentially act upon any final escrow releases made by Landmark contingent upon a location of sufficient capacity and availability. I second the motion. Okay. Uh, Peter made the motion. I read seconded. Peter, aye. Yeah, aye. Motion carried. Motion carried. Yeah. We apologize. We've had a, quite a number of emergencies over the past couple of days. Um, we've had some people that are out ill. We've had some people that have had some recent deaths in the family, um, as well as another individual out of the country. So therefore, the absence of our secretaries. So we apologize for any inconvenience, but life happens. So. Okay. I'm playing secretary tonight, so yeah. I'll, I'll need a second to have everything noted here. Um, at this time, I'll open up the floor to any other public comments. Um, Stonecroft, you're welcome to stay, but if you want to leave, it's up to you. Um, I know we have a number of people that have signed in, and we have a couple of people on Zoom. We have Kelly P. and Peter Wallace. Um, uh, Kelly Pickards, thank you. Um, on Zoom, uh, does anybody have a public comment in the audience? Several, uh, if you have a comment, come on, please. Yeah, please come up to the podium and say your name and address. 
Deborah Grassman, Ford for Water Street, Strasbourg, PA. Um, I was at the meeting on Saturday and uh, it was discussed with the insurance that there is a problem here and that it's a possibility that the building will be condemned. Okay, uh, how many other insurances for downtown? We're, we're going to table this conversation for now. We have to have a lot of further discussion with the gentlemen in the next meeting. So it's it's not... It's, it's not set in stone. Right, it's not we set are, in stone. We are considering yeah. all options. We're talking to other insurance carriers. Right now we have... Um, uh -oh. uh, hold on, just restart. Uh, we've got this reporting. Um, <laughs> Nothing's going right. Yeah. So we're, we are going to be fishing around for other insurance policies. We haven't recently done that when Jim Brooks was on the board and Jim was an insurance guy by trade. And we apparently had a, a very good uh, deal with EMC. Okay, I do have an insurance company. Fortunately, I don't have the number because I lost my phone last week and all my contacts. It's called Fair Plan. And it's out of Philadelphia. And my mother used it way back when she had to have some work done in her home. Um, and so that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. The other one was, Inspector, how many, I, I didn't start all this stuff way back in these days. Uh, how many inspectors were here to inspect the building? Right now, other than the uh, initial bit that we have with the wall that is very quickly falling off the back of the building. We've had, we had two. two. Yeah, we've had two, and it was a crap come back into is, a top end of things. Sure, they want to come and take a look. Yes, if the hours are nine to two, they just have to show up at the building and okay. Yeah, he is certified, he's in the middle of going out his daughter's house and reconstructing it, so he knows what the price of the format and everything would be. Mm -hmm. And, um, another thing is, um, several approached me about the parking on Main Street. They would like to know if they can go, the, we can go back to having the line put this way. Reason being is three homes on Main Street are taking up seven car spaces. So they can't even park one of their cars uh, on the Main Street. And so they said when they first moved here, they had the lines different. So you're talking about diagonal park? Yes. Parallel, yes. We can, we can take a look well, at us. something to consider. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, there's not just one thing. They were, they were on top. Yeah. yeah, and they take the almost this whole half a block with three houses. Yeah, we, we can certainly look at that and kind of float the idea around and see how that would how that would work if it maximizes parking without impacting the roadway. And the nice thing about Main Street is it's very wide. Yeah. So okay. Next question is going to be way overbound from me talking, but I was asked how the option riders were able to get the building up here with the well they had when the people down here who had the restaurant and stuff were told it, it, they have to put a new one in if they wanted to open another business. I have absolutely oh, no idea. Don't, no. Oh. Usually, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but the only time that you could not be able to do that would be if you're like a mortgage company or whatever you're going through. Part of what you have to have inspected is like a, actually a septic system or some sort of sewage conveyance. And well, it may not have even been the township that denied it. Yeah, each parcel could yeah. have completely different constraints. So without knowing the specifics of each one, I can't give it up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments? Well, I guess I do. What up? Um, Austin Troutman. So, I don't know a lot of what's going on here, but it says proposed new building. Where's the proposed new building? We've been in discussion with an architect over design, and the concept is, is to use some space across the street in the park, eventually demolish this building and create a public works uh, center here along with the new salt sheds. What's a public works? On the truck, 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 the
Is there a chair? There are some folding chairs in the home that I think you'd like. Sorry, thank you. Yeah. Um, this is the short answer. Yes. Yeah. That is still very much in the early stages of things, but because of the issues that we're facing with the building, we're having to take a serious look at is it cost effective to try to put this along, or is it more cost effective to grants which are available for new buildings? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Part is we we have we have an annual budget available for building repairs. Um, and we would not exceed a mortgage that would cost that amount annually. So that's a, another thing that we'll do. Awesome. Well, I've been to a number of these in the week, and um, you were supposed to get grants for some of the road repair. No, we've never we tried. We try to get grants for the road yeah. repair. We've had success with that. Um, geez, it's not. That school road actually was, was funded by grants in part. Yeah. Um, we had some grants for Spur Road. We did with um, Tulhocken. Um, Hickory Road was done with grants. Every year when the grants open up, we apply for them, but they become very, very good. Well, remember the one time I told you guys when our senator was Dave Ardalton, you were supposed to work for Christine. Christine told me if you want to get grants and you want to get good grants, you work through their office. We've been in touch with Senator. We're like, we well, our with and our Senator. Well, we yeah. Chris Gephardt. Um, Featherman's office, Gephardt, and um, Muser. Those are the. the well, Muser is in our Congress. Well, he's our Congress team, but right. you don't we've go through Muser. We've been in touch with everyone, yeah, and we do have an active grant writer working with us. Well, apparently something's wrong. Because, well, too long. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Um, because other people get grants mm -hmm. to fix roads and fix things under your township. Um, so, uh, so this proposed new building, who is who is asking for this building? We're collectively looking at the state of the building that we're in, and that is one of the options that we're considering instead of pumping hundreds of thousands of dollars into this building, is getting grants to build a more purpose-driven, actually fit-for-purpose building. Yeah, okay. Well, who's going to take care of this new fit-for-purpose building? The same people that are taking care of this building, theoretically, or in, in this case, um, who are trying to take care of this I building. don't know who's taking care of this building, I guess. Like I said, I don't know a lot of what's going on, but I don't, I don't see a lot of that. The project is in infancy. There's not much to know at this point. Oh, yeah. Can you open the door? Yes. Thank you. Well, I was just wondering if the people from the township want a building like that. The people in town, in the village, not town, in the village, we have. Almost 6,000 acres in the township that's preserved. Do you think those people are going to want to pay for all this? Again, I mean, right. those people probably aren't going away real fast because their farms are preserved and they want to make a living farming. Yes. Yeah. And that's... we need to have. And I don't see where in, um, this, whatever you call this person, building. To you how this off you that to me. Okay. Yeah. So we've already exceeded capacity for that room. That's our office room. We have two secretaries. Um, it's very difficult to get things done there. As the treasurer, I've had to bump my room, my desk, and bump my stuff in there. It's back and forth, back and forth the whole day. The money that you guys are all spending uh, to support your, your local government is literally going out the windows. Our gas and electric bill for this year alone to date is about six or seven thousand dollars. I don't have the number in front of me. All that money is literally going out the windows. The only rooms that are heated is this room, that room, and that room. All the rest of the building is not heated or cooled. We don't have a functioning um, uh, water pump, effective water pump for the, for the restrooms. So it's somewhere in the line of the well. So if you guys use the bathroom, there's very little water flow. Please flush and make sure it goes down. 
There's no water fountain anymore. There's no water softener anymore. There's no consumable water in this building. Um, what I said, no one's taking care of it. Well, this isn't us. Yeah. This it's these are problems that have that have continued okay the exterior wall where the garages are is literally peeling away from the building that's not us so there's a renovation to the building uh sue's not here there's a renovation to the building in the last uh, century that they cut away the wall but didn't provide adequate support now that may have been a different building code but because that wall is peeling away it's literally taking the building with it all these windows here leak when there's a heavy rain if you want to take a look all these windows are peeling away from the building this i think was about a fifty thousand dollar estimate for these windows if we were to replace the, the, the windows as they are without blocking it out and creating a smaller opening so all of the, the parts of the building, if you want to come during the weekday, I'll unlock the building and I'll walk you through the place. I'll show you all the things that I have to school here for six right. years. So and it, I live in this township for seven or right. two years. So so it's not us. It's not us that didn't maintain the building. It's it's the deputy's power oh, to the maintain other. the building. Okay. Yeah. So if you want yeah, to, you, all you, right. you can take a look at the meeting minutes in so, previous previous years. A lot of those supervisors said they're not going to put the money into the building. And as far as your concern about the, the, the public here, if we put up a new building and there's a community center to it, it increases the home values by up to 15% within the township itself. So building a community facility and, and increasing the usage of the building increases everyone's home ownership value here. And it will continue to attract families and keep families in town it's not just you and your farms. It's just not just Stonecrook. It's not just me. It's not just Peter. I'm looking to do things and put things in place so that future generations have a place where they can go for government purposes as well as community um, events. It's not just about paying bills and keeping the lights on and trying to do the roads. There's a lot more that goes on here. And I'm trying to do things so that in the future, this doesn't happen. Yeah, we've hit the point of no return, essentially, with this building. And that's kind of where I'm at with it. We're going to have inspectors in and everything to look at it and give us the official prognosis of it. But there is decades worth of neglect. neglect. That's probably the better, better word than what I was going to use on the building. You can only put so many band-aids on and it becomes an expensive ongoing process. An easy example about the community center aspect of it. You're pretty much at capacity right now in this meeting, technically yeah. probably over capacity. And we don't actually have that many people here. We don't have a space that is adequate to hold large meetings. We simply don't. We don't have a space in the township because the fire hall is now privately owned where people can rent out the hall to have a wedding or a kid's birthday party. We are woefully deficient in a lot of what we do simply because of the shape and layout of the building and its age. Yeah, yeah, the insurance. We were we've been kind of just limping it along, but our insurance company has said as of February they are dropping us. They don't want anything to do with the building. Well, there are other insurance, there are, and we're gonna we're gonna pursue that, but just maybe. And there are other ways to do this. What is it? It costs money. It all costs money. And so it's basically that brick wall we got a uh, an estimate from a company that specializes in brick restoration. We're talking seventy thousand dollars, and that's an estimate. When you, everyone knows, when you start opening things up, other things can happen. If it's seventy thousand dollar estimate, that could run us a hundred thousand dollars. There's a bee infestation that we had. Oh my god, two three years ago. There's wasps living in between the bricks. There's so many issues. Yeah. So it's something that we're, we're actively considering. There's not been a decision made on it, but by the nature of the state of the building, it's a realistic prospect. I won't sugarcoat that. It's not. It's not. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll agree to disagree then, Nelson. Well, hey, when we have a building on the farm, we have to fix it. Yeah. And but people you, chose not to. We it. don't just tear them down and go new. Right. You have, a, you hit a point and... Correct me if I'm wrong. You have a point where a building is so dilapidated that it is not cost effective to fix it when you tear it down. It was so beat up. Well, this is one of those. Well, just yes or no. If you had a building that was more money to fix it than it was to put up a new building, would you fix it or would you tear it down and put up a new building? 
Probably nowadays, mm -hmm. fix it. Now, if it was cheaper to tear it down and put up a new building, would you fix it? I, I don't think that's what we're looking at. That's, yeah, it's, it's fine. That's fine. He's not going to give me an answer. So thank you for your comments. What one up the podium, sir? Please state your name for the record. Charles Seventy eight Main Street. Um so I, I like what you're saying about the building and the community center. I think my concern why I originally read about it was just mm -hmm. um money because uh, I have a certain love for this township, that's why I moved back here. Um when I hear things like this, I mean what you guys said was great. I mean, wouldn't it be awesome for Marion Township? So all, my only concern is hopefully my taxes don't go up over it. No. Uh, yeah. So that's and yeah. I think to appease people, even if it has to be out of county, I think we could get like uh, the people like um did my house that was falling apart and had the dentist. I mean, granted it was twenty, thirty thousand for one wall on a little house, but that's all they do is restore yeah. historical. And then you get a cash on and then obviously you know, closure pay is not worth it. But I think it would impeach people if we had something like that. Look at this pay for a hundred eighty thousand. We could do this, 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 and that. If that's totally anyway, yeah, that's a great idea with the building. But my concern has always been uh, the roads because I moved here twenty years ago, and no, we don't have. A lot of money and that's the whole thing with the whole sewer thing which we won't touch on but um the, the roads and this and animal we'll stores so i click on them too how can you have these beautiful towns with the stout tavern and everything if we had the roads done and the sidewalks done this town would be closer to lit mm -hmm. yeah but it's been 20 some years through before you guys yeah. and the same potholes are here so yeah. Yeah. when i hear money that's all i'm not here to bitch i'm part of the money yeah. Let me yeah. two things. So, money, I want to know, with, why aren't we doing the roads? And who cares about the sewer? We still yeah. need it. Yeah, I won't disagree with you on that. Uh, so, principally, number one, with the buildings, because I'll kind of get with what you had talked about. We are looking to do this heavily with grants. And that's one of the things that we have met with our state representatives, our congressional representatives, the county commissioners, is to try to get help with grant opportunities. Yeah, and the Marion Community Center. I like it. Yeah. So the other, the other thing is if we can secure enough grant funding and there are grants available for building a building, there are not grants available for fixing a building. Understood. So yeah. that's that. And um, I only had a couple little things not, yeah. not long to be made at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and with those, I need to talk to more meetings and you not tell me that's for meetings. So I'm yes. happy, to, happy to address. Putting about four hundred fifty thousand dollars into roads this year alone. Um, uh, we get about one hundred and fifty-two thousand a year in liquid fuels. So it's like every three to four years we could do a major project. And take off little, yeah. little fix yeah. as they go on. But yeah. one of the things, which is uh, Sheridan Road south towards the county line from uh, Main yeah. Street, there, yeah. yeah, which is in dire need of attention. That one is close to 300 every day to get to the turnpike. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's about $300,000 to do that road. So this is where we have to very carefully weigh what we're doing because I would love. To repave all the roads and build an art from now. Yeah, I don't see Main Street being done. And even if it means people have to fix their own stuff, it's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But wouldn't it be nice to have a road and nice to be south? Yeah. If if we could just wish things into reality, I would love to have uh, a so that was that was my thought because I'm thinking about one here and then the playground. Um, we that's another one we're going after grants for specifically. Even, even if we don't get anything like normal sorts, because my thoughts when I raised my first children, uh, I'm here. The playground, I don't know how the budget works. You know, I know how it works in normal stores. And my wife's on the rec board, and this was called with asking the township for help. That what I do know is that when you when they say, hey, we need diamond tech or whatever. Mm -hmm. The township doesn't screw around and say, we need to get this approval. They give them $800. I take the dump truck down. Somebody does, go get diamond tech. 
the the mulch. I don't want to see any old people over here raking the mulch. The township needs to mulch the playgrounds. It's not rocket science, but it hasn't happened in 20 years. So two two things. Even so, if you're separate, I don't understand why the, the township doesn't just back the playground. That's what the citizens well, and all the young people live. Yep. Yeah. So here, hold, hold yeah. on. So but I'm I'm looking at it and yeah. it's yeah. wrong, but yeah. it's simple in my yeah. hand. I'm like, what's so going on? Most of our, our road through are uh, not on the younger side. Let's put it that way. Those are the people that are willing to work the road through job. Understand. So when you see somebody that maybe has white like hair or something like that, I would have left the positions open. If, if you're, yeah. yeah, I mean, actually, I would love to be a part time employee. Oh, then please not. I'll be an involuntary to do certain things because I love the community. Huh. For, for, for the day of the month, right? Uh, okay. The MTCA, the Community Association, meets here first Thursday of the month. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to, to volunteer and get involved there. They're always looking for help. Uh, but any time that they come to us and say, hey, we need mulch or, hey, we need diamond tech for the yeah, game. You just don't have a labor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're still yeah. And if you'd like to, please come in during I office like hours. I catching yep. potholes. Yep. Yep. Come, in, come in during office hours. And if you can, um, give us a resume. Um, the ladies will talk to you a little bit about that. We will definitely get back to you because we're, we're looking yep. at some new hires lately. And um, it would be great. It would be absolutely great. Anyone that's interested in road positions, again, part-time. You don't necessarily have to do the work while the office is open. The office is open from 9 to 2. You could come in after hours and do the work when you can, when you can do the work. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, not to get off subject about the uh, hiring thing. Hey, if somebody needs a part time job, you need to them, you know, yep. apply. I'm very interested. But my main thing was just the fixing the roads. And man, when you hear a new building, it's the guys telling me the sewer already. So I was so like, please. We're putting our finger in the dike. We're just plugging holes, plugging holes, plugging holes. We're treading water at this point. Yeah, um, the sit also yeah. end by saying it's more like. Yes, we need to sit and everything have to go up gradually eventually in every township. Everyone knows that. But if all of a sudden the building was doing they get a certain grant, and certain people's properties would all of a sudden go up, even like their taxes went up. But anything above three percent or God knows what all I'm saying yeah. is there's gonna be a shit show of the meeting yeah. and everything else. So let me let me leave you with one one final point. Other than last year where we went up and leave one like tenth of a mill. I have managed to balance the budget in a way where we have not increased the local tax for Marion Township in the past six years. It's the the school tax is what yeah. goes up. And I'm I'm as much victim to that as yeah. it has gone up, I think probably doubled since I moved in like 12 years ago. That's the one that really kills it. Yes. And that's one that we don't see a set from in yeah. in this capacity for roads or anything. So um thank you. Thank um, you. But, uh, so Thursday would be the day if someone was interested in yeah. yeah. First first Thursday of the month, the community association, seven o'clock or is it six thirty? Seven o'clock. Yep. They're right here in the same same building. And uh, they're they're involved with everything from the park to the movie nights. That's that's their thing. You know, I've been track I track the baseball field and I do stuff over there for free. Oh well, thank you. If the township I'm just saying, uh, you know, I, I you don't have the funding, but yeah, that's something that we had to do in other boroughs. It's like, oh my God, it was like, seriously, the baseball field and we put a measure out there. And I'd like to do that if I was yeah. employed. I guess we yeah. aren't yeah. having circles. Yeah. Drop off the information and we'll be we able to talk to them. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Heather Hanna. I am a candidate for PSA House District 5. It's nice to see you all again. I was here earlier in March. And I had the pleasure of attending the car show over the summer. I am here just to listen and learn. As before, I support supervisors and borough council members with whatever you have to do. As in your volunteer positions, you're trying to juggle a whole lot of things. Um, I gave some of my extra cards to Kelly in case anybody needs some um, because I do have to exit at 8.30, unfortunately. I would like to stay later, but I cannot at this time. But if anybody needs to reach out to me for anything, I'm happy to talk to you. And again, just want to be a participant and help out the community as best as I can. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly, I'll snap a picture of the business card before you. Okay, any other public comments? 
Okay, seeing none, we will move into the main items on the agenda. I I can. We get to the top of the list. All right. Okay, first item is just kind of a general reminder. Um, at this point, we are uh, in uh, the the stage of the on lot management pump out schedules, where every single zone has the, the ability to pump out and get their system inspected. So if you haven't done that, uh, now is as good a time as any to do that, especially before winter sets in. Um, we also are still accepting letters of support around the Act 537 project that we are under mandate to do. Um, just to reiterate, this is not something that you have to be in favor of. The letter can clearly state that you're opposed to it, but you were in favor of us trying to get grants to, to offset it. Um, there's a lot of people who have supplied letters in that fashion. So every every bit helps when it comes to making our case with the, the state in terms of securing grants and other funding. Um, also related to Act 537, just as a general reminder, we are still going through the, the process as prescribed by law. The special study that we did back in April was submitted. It was approved. Uh, with a couple of comments uh, generally around uh, additional need for management plans, construction and operation uh, permits, and approval of an overall design when we get to that point. But no news there. It's just been kind of quiet the past couple of months. Uh, as we've already, I think, discuss the potential post new building uh, extensively. I will kind of skip over that one. That is something that we are going to be weighing. We talked to an architect to get an idea of cost. We have a layout we feel is a, a good layout for that. And that would give us the ability to also start requesting grants to see what the grant prospects are. Um, but we're also going to be talking to other insurance companies, getting trapped in um, probably other possible inspectors as well. Uh, to give us a really good idea of the building. We had done a kind of softball analysis last year, uh, windows, the wall, um, putting in insulation wherever possible. And it was a very, <laughs> yeah. very good. It was the, the most recent uh, uh, agency that we had go through uh, was just addressing the minimum requirements that was proposed to us by our insurance company. And my gut feeling is if they're not going to insure us, no one else will, or if they will, the cost will be astronomical. So, so. Okay. Um, with that said, the uh, next item, part number three, is the uh, the fact that we're probably going to lose our, we're definitely going to lose our insurance with EMC on February. February. So I guess we can so go to we can go to number yeah. And I think, I think the biggest difference is uh, you have a group of people here, and I'll say it, I'm old supervisor now. We have two young gentlemen on the board. We're, we're trying to do something different, and I don't know if it was anyone else's intention in the past or not. We're trying to get this set up so that the ball is rolling forward, that it doesn't matter who's sitting sitting in the seat, these are what the job duties are. And that should be true of anyone in any township, borough, council. Granted, every township and every Every place you go throughout Pennsylvania, every place has different needs and different communities, but the job should be essentially be the same. We are responsible to adhere to the constitution of the state of Pennsylvania, of course, the United States, but also second class township code. And we're trying to make sure that we're very strict with, with those guidelines. And, and we're trying to be very forward thinking in planning. So it's not just, oh, this road is busted up this year. No, it's we're, we're taking inventory of all the roads and, and trying to say, okay, can we get a head on it? We're asking Mike to work with us. Mike, these are the next couple of rows we want to work on. Get us the plan. The plan's there. But boom, funding opens up and ends, and then we get the funding. Same is true with the building. With any of the other problems that you have and you see within the town, we're trying to get one step ahead and say, okay, what's the problem? How can we address it? And how can we move forward by having the plans in place, which is very important. And that's the key to get the funding and the grants that we need. Um, instead of instead of doing it like, oh, now there's a problem, now what? We're trying to be very proactive, which I think is a very different position from what I've read from previous minutes from, from board members, uh, just, just going through old information. We're, we're, it, there's a lot. And if anyone wants to come and see us in action, just come in the office throughout the week. It, there's just so much work that there is to do. Everyone thinks, oh, it's just meetings and approving this and that. It's not the case. There, there's tons of phone calls. There's tons of email. The NCU's two guys will tell you. There's tons of, of regulations that we have to comply with. It, it, it's, it's 
it's not an easy job. It's a very challenging job. So. Yeah. yeah. And I, I want to live here for 72 years. Yeah. Too, and, also, and I want to make sure that I'm not kicking the can down the road on a structural issue. Yeah. Because whether we deal with it now or deal with it later, dealing with it later, it's only going to be more expensive. Right. So. Um, all of our farms are our farms and the ones around us. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We're not looking for development. We're looking to make the the space that we use for things like meetings and community functions better. We're not not looking to put in condominiums next. You can't. Well, you could get an army crew in here, and we're we're a government entity. If it hits a certain threshold, it has to go out to bid. And I understand all that. Yeah. We had a bid too for our minority building, and we had to use uh, prevailing wages. Yeah. Yeah. So there's all sorts of rules that go. It's not as simple as calling up a buddy and saying, hey, can you do this repair form? There's this odd process and rules that we have to observe. And, and it can be done, too, it can. if you want. If, if, if you want. It comes down to the cost of benefit exercise on this. Is it more costly to fix this building with the diminished capacity and any of the other dysfunctions that it has? Well, this is a big problem. But well, because you're in this room, it's the it's the rest of the building that's the yeah, problem. Have, the entire upstairs can't be used. There's yeah. floor missing in it. One that can one 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 protect the floor. Through the floor. I can understand yeah. that. Yeah. 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 So I mean, we're we're not doing ourselves any favors on this. I get the sentimental value. I truly do. And this is a situation where if we go down the avenue to the building, we won't sacrifice the character. That we will try to be taking things yeah. like the lights or the hardwood floor, things that the the bricks, we might do a, a facade on the front, front of the bricks. The, the, the goal here is to not cheapen ourselves in a, in a character of the building, but make the building actually sustainable and usable. That's and that's that's right. all I'm gonna right, say. Right. Yeah. And for government function, there's so much more needs. You should see what our records look like. It's just a nightmare. We have to digitize everything. There's there's so much that we have to pack up on that we have to do. Well, if you want to come in and help us, please come and help us. We'll never yeah. turn down help. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for number four, for future planning, I'm just going to say that we, we have to reassess some stuff on that because yeah. of some of the curveballs we've been from recently. Yeah. Um, number five. I do ask my yes. About the speed tables. Yes. Um, are you okay if he gives us some a cost estimate yeah. placement? Can you give us a cost? Yeah, I, yeah, I thought you were. Cost yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. That's it. I'll um, still look at it. It was a couple of yeah, it was two or three weeks. All right, I'll take a look. Yeah. I apologize. Um, I think it's in the it's actually in the packet from last month's meeting, I believe, where that you had the suggestions on and it was location. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Cost. Yeah. Cost. Cost. Okay. Yeah. It, it's cost. Yeah. Okay. With you, it's cost. Ten dot actually yeah. gives you a generalized. Okay. Yeah. I can see him driving through me. She, I have someone on my tail that just speeding mm -hmm. up behind me. I'm going twenty five. And they zoom up behind me, and I'm just going 25 throughout town, and they just keep on, they're on my tail. It's like, no, yeah. I, I've had it. Yeah, yeah. we need to, we need to yeah. go to the next set of things yeah. for speeding on Main Street. Yeah. Um, uh, next item is the proposed long term uh, rental inspection ordinance and fee schedule. Um, Colin has suggested that this mimic very closely the short term for the general ease of enforcement. Um, I believe we have that ready for adoption. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And that would be resolution 2024-11. Um, oh, this this would be ordinance. This ordinance. Is 24 uh, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. The wrong thing. So that would be ordinance 24 3 um, for people who aren't aware, this essentially creates a permitting scheme for anyone who has a long-term rent for the township. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to uh to approve ordinance 2024-3. Second. Can carry unanimously. So in, in, in association with the ordinance, there are also two resolutions. Mm -hmm. Those resolutions set the fee schedule under the long-term ordinance, as well as the, uh, the actual codes to be enforced. Um, there are two because the other one is an amended resolution for the short term ordinance, which mirrors the resolution for the long term ordinance in terms of uh, the fee schedule as well as the codes to be enforced based upon some feedback that I've gotten from craft before tonight. 
So in that case, we would need to uh, make a motion to adopt both of those resolutions. Okay, I'll make a motion to adopt the long-term rental resolution 2024-12. Second. Okay. Motion carried unanimously. I will also make a motion to adopt the short-term rental resolution 2024-11. Second. Okay. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ken. Next is the intermunicipal agreement around the uh, proposed potential sewer service. This is actually relating to a development that is part of the way in, and I always forget this column. It's, like, I, 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 uh, it's mostly, it's like mostly in Heidelberg, a little bit in Marion. Mo mostly in Marion. Mostly so, Marion. So there, there's, a, there's a parcel of property near the border of the borough of Wimblesdorf that may be developed. The parcel, as Peter said, spans Marion Township and Heidelberg Township. Um, the, the township is not creating a municipal authority, does not yet have sewer service, obviously. So the developer has reached out to the Wilmosdorf Sewer Authority to, to potentially provide public sewer to the property. Because this property is outside of the sewer authority's territory, being the borough of Wilmosdorf, uh, Marion Township and Heidelberg Township have to provide the consent for Wilmersdorf Sewer Authority to potentially provide service to that property. I understand that Heidelberg Township, I believe, um, authorized the execution of the agreement at its meeting last night. So the board would have to do the same. And this is uh, just again for anybody following along, this is the same sort of thing that had to happen for Stone Park. Right, right. And, and this this does not create an obligation upon any party at this point to provide sewer service to this property to the extent that the developer gets an approved plan from the township and follows all the rules and regulations of Google's Rook Sewer Authority, including the payment of tapping fees. And at that point, they would be entitled to sewer service there. Yeah. But the project is, again, still in its infancy and, and has a long way to go. I don't think a preliminary plan has even been submitted to this township. So probably looking at in 12, yes. to 18, 12 to 18 month timeline before uh, shovel hits the ground. But this is one of the first steps that has to be done. Yes. The only thing we have in that agreement is the sewer. Uh, I mean, they might be, they might be doing a private well, yeah. but Pro we don't know. Probably on a lot of wells. I don't, there, do you know if the sewer are I don't know. I don't think the sewer are provides water. No, no, no. That's why it's named sewer Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know how I don't know how the property will get water. Yeah, system. but it's it's very early on this process. We're concerned in talking to the property. I I wouldn't imagine that they. I don't. I don't think you guys even have city to do. I don't think you. Honestly, yeah, that's you know. Yeah. yeah, there's there's been no no talking of that, and this is. Like Colin said, the baseline. This is them saying, "Do we have the ability to right. get basic infrastructure?" This, this, this is the the buyer slash prospective developer doing its due diligence on the property as part of the agreement of sale with the seller. Can the property actually get solutions? So, I'll make a motion to ex uh, authorize the execution of Resolution twenty twenty four dash fifteen. Second. Okay. Carry unanimously. Let's, 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 let's just vote for. Okay, the next one is the intermunicipal agreement for sewer service to that property by the Wilmersdorf Sewer Authority. I'll make a motion to uh, approve that. <laughs> a second. Okay, motion carries unanimously. Okay. Oh, here. Okay, next is the update to the subdivision and land development ordinance, or SALDO, and the stormwater ordinance, along with the fees associated with that. Uh, Engineer Bingham is uh, currently working on that. I believe you sent that over to Colin for review. I believe I have something that I sent over. I think we had tabled it for anything else that. Yeah. Know. Okay. So I, I I did have a chance to look at the subdivision and land development ordinance. It it does get, it does give the township the right to set a new fee schedule by resolution, which okay. which is which is great. So um, we can certainly have. Something for the board to consider. Come to next meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I'll, and I'll and I'll consult with Michael about the appropriate fees to be imposed. 
Okay. Uh, next is the LSA grant. Uh, we have received grant funding that we have not applied for around the initial parts of the sewer project that we're looking for to go through. Uh, we just need to make a motion to. No. So, so we receive a funding we need a motion to accept, accept the funds yeah. and then the motion to transfer the funds. Do you have yeah, it? Have. Oh, sorry. It's, it's, I can't see. It's okay. <laughs> you know, before I can get there. Um, so, I'll make a motion to accept and transfer these funds into the general fund account. Second. Let's, let's, let's take, Do you have the dollar amounts? Uh, I don't have any. Let's take votes. Please. Okay. okay. Let's go. okay. okay. Uh, uh, roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Okay. Aye. Motion carries. Um. Uh. You. Uh, the specific sum. Yeah. Do you have it? Yes. Fifty-six thousand okay. and three dollars. Fifty-six thousand. So for those of you, again, we had applied for an LSA grant. Uh, the total amount is a little over $100,000. We've already received $56,000 of that fund, and that is for the sewer uh, design. And so this year, again, we're working with Hydroterra to um, submit the remainder of the bills so that we get reimbursed for those fees. So. Okay. Next uh, 2025 budget, we're going to begin looking at this. Um, I'll need to do my usual number crunching and uh, probably have something at the November meeting. But ideally, October, that way you're not down to the wire because yep. you have to advertise it for 30 days prior to yep. adopting it before the end of the year. Um, and I forward it the most recent. So. Yeah, because I need to. Yeah. the loss and the budget. I would say I need the profit loss, I need the budget, and I need. I think I can get everything I need from the email. Okay. Um, so I'll look at that. But Whatever you need, I'll get it to Yeah, so we just got to be uh, careful and build in things that we know are going to yep. be things for next year. Uh, next, and we can finally take this one off the agenda, is the Western Burks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403, about the amendment for keeping pets and small domesticated farm animals. The ordinance has finally received all signatures for that, so we didn't have Done. So we now have a, a, an ordinance that actually reflects how people are keeping animals in the township. So next, uh, it, we're going to kind of blow by this one. This is the uh, Stonecrop Pond for fire suppression. We're going to be tabling any of the commentary and discussion around that for the special meetings. We're going to have on either the uh, 14th of October, 24th of October, or the 7th of November. Uh, likewise, I don't think Yes. Uh, what I heard said was that there was going to be a lawyer presenting uh, to talk about the closeout of. Oh, the so 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 let, let me let me just say this. I I know I know it's taken some time for us to get to the point where we can have a special meeting, but but part of why it's taken time is because I've been reaching out to Landmark and have explained. Some of your concerns in hopes that this meeting can be pr productive and you can hopefully explain some of those concerns and and hopefully get answers or some type of commitment to have at least some of them addressed okay so the, the idea of this special meeting is really for landmark and the hoa to come together and, ho and hopefully you know, reach some productive resolution. So the, the the goal is to have more than just landmarks attorney at that meeting. The yes. goal is to have the, the project manager and potentially an engineer, that, an engineer there so they can state their position, you can state your position. Hopefully there can be some type of a commitment at least on how to address some of the issues. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, the, the wording around that motion is the special meeting is for us to take in all of that and in consideration for any future final releases of bond money. So we want to we want we want to hear what they have to say, and we want to hear what you have to say before we potentially act upon any final release, which I would expect the township to receive in, in the near future. Like I had a question with the, uh, the monuments that they had previously requested the release now for. Did anybody get in contact with you? Because the Stonecroft residents have reported that they have gone out and just started slapping monuments. In. So there has been some communication that they were going to be going out there. Uh, I wasn't aware that they were putting in monuments. 
um, but they were supposed to be going out there and putting in some additional pins in the uh, the curb. Yeah. So that's right. what they were doing. Right. They were shooting screws into the curb. So 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 one of, so what one of the one of the topics that I discussed with Landmarks Council and the engineer is this issue involving the monuments. Okay. As I've said a couple different times, the monuments cannot be put in the place that was contemplated on the plan because the utility right of way runs through that area, okay? And, and, and the, the township doesn't regulate the utility. The utility is subject to regulations by the PUC, okay? So they got approval from the PUC 20 years ago to put that line in that place, okay? The, the, eas the easement agreement that the utility has bars landmark from putting anything in that right of way. Okay, even if even if that wasn't even if that let me finish even if that wasn't the case. Okay, their surveyor is uncomfortable setting you know a two foot pin where there may be some type of electrical line. I'm well, telling you that's a concern okay. by us. We understand okay. that. So 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 ultimately the resolution was reached between. The township and landmark that they can offset the monuments in the curves. So that's what you're seeing right now. Is them is them doing that work to set the final monuments? Um, you know, we would have been probably quite satisfied if you identified the uh, used the property line pins, which were already in the curves. And uh, we, were, as I heard it from the surveyor, it was the engineer plus the these pins going in which were okay, and that was. And sounds like engineering never heard anything about that. No, that's not true. I, I, I was aware that it's going to happen. I wasn't aware when they were going to be doing it. And the other neighbors were so vicious. We, we, we didn't ask to be told what was going to happen, and we just saw the guys. I can't control when they go out there. Yeah, I can only control what they pass do. that yeah. information on when the landmark people were here that we wanted to be informed, and they just walked over it again as usual. Yeah, and it sounds like they told you that they were going to do it, but we didn't have details of when. Correct. They, they did not. They did not call me and say that they were going to be out there in twenty. Which, 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 by the way, is something that I had specifically requested. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, moving right along, uh, we already covered the special meetings a little bit. Um, we are still working on the uh, intake form and protocols around um, general property damage complaints and things like that, no clouds or other items. Um, so we're going to continue to work on that. That's it's getting circulated for the, uh, the attorneys. Um, we're also going to the next item, uh, working on a revising. Uh, yes. Before you can vote, Dan, under process, yeah. we please request. You skipped right. Well, we're not. We're not releasing it. That's the monument one. Thank you. Yeah. I just wanted it on fit. Yep. No. No problem. No, we're we're not. Not. Yes. Just something real quick. Yes. Um, it's just general conversation for everybody to get yourselves asked. Uh, more to do with the town but, Um, I took a video of the shenanigans that was going on with the bar up here. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that in a second. And That's another agenda. Nice. Other. I was just letting you know yeah. in the last. Uh, five days, there's an official petition. There's other townships involved, Clinton Township, the state police, and they said it's more of a two county problem. So I was just saying, here it is in our township. I was just wondering if that was subject matter. It's going to be covered under 4050, and uh, the police are fully aware of it. And I understand that the police, um, it, it, you know, nobody expects anybody to go and group with a couple hundred people and put their life in danger. But that's why I talked to was the Cooper Barracks, and uh, they said they were aware of it. And then here I'm on Facebook, and it's on the Seeking Spring Community page Monday. Yeah. And they and there's a lot of people with a lot of great info. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, this snowball all started rolling, and it's going to be very quick. Yeah. So we, 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 yeah. we, we, we really cannot say much about the situation. Yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's on the radar for people. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. It'd be nice if we had unlimited funding, which we don't. It'd be nice if we said we could have 
four full-time officers in every force on duty and all, and I know it's not realistic, but we do have a problem. Oh, we, we don't. We are, we are painfully aware. Yeah. I followed them all the way to Reading to watch them drive Past, I, I was coming out of Wawa, so it started here at 11 a.m. Yeah. And then I was coming out of Wawa with the sun, and I'm like, I can't even drive my registered insured four wheeler to Stoutsburg, but apparently I can drive a razor side by side and go right down the curb in front of McDonald's and block traffic with a Toyota minivan. It's all good. Yeah, well, just yeah. we shouldn't do it either, really. But I follow. We'll, 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 we'll keep this going. We'll keep this, this meeting. Um, so we're we're going to be working on revising the five year maintenance plan around the roads uh, based on some of the items that we have for culverts and major projects. Um, in terms of road work and major projects, uh, we are going to be addressing the Wintersville Road culvert at 3820 Wintersville Road this year. A special meeting was held on August 15th to award the bids. Uh, this went to Mr. Rehab for a total of $59,521. Um, for those in the audience, if you want to have a side conversation, I appreciate the volume either being lower or if you want to take it out in the hallway. Thank you. Uh, next is... Yeah, I did sign in, but okay. I didn't want to make a comment before I did. Uh, my name is Dan Fine, 14 Roseburg Court, Stone Crawl Village. Uh, we'd like to be friendly neighbors. So if you don't get insurance on your building, I would be happy to speak with the HOA board and the residents of Stone Crawl Village to allow you folks to at least hold your meetings there for Saturday morning workshop and for Thursday evening meeting. We can hold a capacity of about this many people. Okay. That's we fair. can't provide an office for you no, no, no. telephone copy your yeah. desk. We can at least provide a place for you to meetings. And I will just go set with the HOK for and the president. Thank you very much, Anna. That's Thank a you. very, very, very awesome offer. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Um, Sheridan Road. As I mentioned earlier, we will be repaving Sheridan Road this year. Uh, we had on that same special meeting on uh, August the 15th, a bid awarded to H&K Group for $266,710. Uh, the notice of acceptance and notice to proceed was issued to the contract. Um, Mike, have we heard anything from them about a okay. live meeting? HK has not set up a, a pre construction meeting, but they have submitted the middle for review their shop drawings. Okay. And we've got those reviewed and submitted them back. Okay. So Fantastic. they're already starting to order those uh, things uh, in the boxes. Just Excellent. to pull on the general, things you did construction masters put in the day on. Um, I believe they did. They, they, yeah. came, they came in high, but I would caution. I'd like to keep the yeah. comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. So, yeah. so if you want to talk to me or I uh, or anybody after the meeting, yeah. just hold, hold the comment. I'll be happy to chat with you for a bit. We're going to try to keep the, yeah. the agenda rolling. Um, the next thing is the guide rails. This is for a portion of William Penn Boulevard and Hickory Road. We made a motion at June's meeting to award this to William Oren's sons for the amount of $20,208. We have issued them the notice of acceptance and notice to proceed. Um, so if there's any developments on that, Mike, we've gotten there is okay. okay. Um so so in reality, a lot of these things are going to be taking place going into 2020, correct? They okay. uh, some of them are yes. Uh, okay. to, be, to be quite honest, Sheridan Road may actually lead into 2025 okay. but due to the, the paving season yeah. that, that we're up against and getting liquid fuel swimming. Yep. So we have to get pre-approval from PennDOT in order to pay past October 15th. Um, generally, they go until October 30th, but that's even still pushing it a little bit. Okay. And so all these projects, I can I can use the good fuels funding for, so I have to worry about PennDOT. Yeah, um, um, just to confirm, we, we made sure that when they, they would bid out, they would like the fuels out of the building. Charlie's yeah. aware. So, so as long as we turn it, then we're good because this has got to be a, we like have nothing fuels. in general funds. Yeah, yeah. it's got to be liquid fuels. 
Uh, next is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive, the main streets. Uh, M&A excavating had been awarded this contract back in the June Board of Supervisors meeting. Excuse me. Um, however, upon further review, it was discovered that M&A is only a PennDOT subcontractor, uh, not a PennDOT general contractor. Uh, so we actually had to reject that bid and re-advertise. Uh, we had at that same August 15th special meeting uh, bids from a number of parties, and we awarded that Allgaier Enterprise LLC, being the lowest bidder, for the amount of $77,875. We have issued the notice of acceptance and the notice to proceed. Um, we're going to skip over Bollinger Road based on the, the potential around these litigation for that and move to item 21, which is the equipment and equipment repair. Uh, the little truck had some rust on it, and we sent that in, and it has been fixed and is back in the garage. Total was $832. Interesting trip. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We have the equipment purchase. Um, we're going to table that for the most part, but the, the long and short of it is our current brush that we use for clearing debris off the road when we mow or trim is wearing out. It's falling apart. So we're looking at potentially getting a uh, blower, yeah, basically a giant leaf blower that goes on the tractor, um, as well as looking at some potential for uh, replacing brushes. Next is the John Deere boom mower. We need to add safety lights, some lettering, some signage. Uh, we are still waiting on the license plate title work to come back. Um, and we had Agritier out to look at it for just a full service and fix uh, some of the issues that it has. Quote they gave us was $6,826. Um, this is something that I, I want to sit down with Jesse and Carl and talk to them yep. about at yep. length. Uh, but we at least have that in our, our pocket yep. for now. Yep, Carl's aware of it. So uh, next is the blue spruce. Uh, 4405 Conrad Wesley Parkway. The property owner is adding an addition to the existing building. Uh, plans have been conditionally approved and are just awaiting administrative items to be submitted prior to the, the, the board does need to make a motion to authorize the execution of the improvements agreement and the stormwater agreement tonight. Okay. So we have the um, improvement agreement and, and so the stormwater agreement. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, improvement agreement for 4405 Conrad Wiser Parkway. Second. Okay. Aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Okay. Um, next is the, I'll make a motion to uh, authorize the stormwater agreement for 4405 Conrad Wiser Parkway. Second. Uh, aye. Aye. And, uh, obviously, those, those plans cannot be released until the township has letter of credit and the insurance gets. Thank you, Council. Okay. Next is 85 Main Street, Twilight Acres. Uh, a preliminary final plan was submitted. Uh, they proposed to add on to the existing building, which is the old social hall, bakery with storage and shipping areas. This would be adding a bakery with storage and shipping areas. Oh, nope, it's inside now. Um, uh, shipping areas along with the cafe. The planning commission has reviewed this. There uh, were no recommendations made. Um, and uh, they are recommending release of the escrow after final invoices are received for the final walkthrough. Um, there isn't anything that we have to do to that, Mike. They're at the stage where they're just clearing things out and getting a final invoice. They would ask for the release, right? Um, no, but that, I believe that last should not have been on there. Okay. Yeah, no recommendations were made. They're still in preliminary plan. Okay. Um, plan is still in the room. Okay. Yeah. All okay. right. So at this point, they don't even have a letter of credit, right? No. Okay. No. Okay. That's probably no, that was bad. Typically, wouldn't be. Until plan is is approved, is condition approved. Okay. The lease is then Yeah, that was awkward. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Now that was. There's there's a lot of agenda items. Yeah. Okay. Um, next is thirteen Tulpey View. Uh, Andrew Bingham visited the property. There is um, sufficient uh, vegetation and stabilization at the property. You can 
What was the permit? Yeah, the storm water permit is effectively served the purpose of us uh, done. Uh, I would recommend at this point releasing any remaining escrow that they have after uh, taking out final invoices that you would receive. There's one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll make a motion to close the permit for 13. I'll second that. Okay, thank you. Uh, 4058. We got a school call. Oh, hi. Sorry. Hi. Thank you for taking care of the cricket. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. It's right off the window. Yeah. Um, I don't think it'll be something for. Oh, okay. okay. My fault. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, 4050 Connor kind of Pfizer. Um, we are very, yeah, to say no comment. We're aware of it. The police are aware of it. Um, so moving on to item 28, 601 Marion Drive. This is a residence owned by Philip and Julia Weiss. Uh, resolution 2024-14 is needed to add the property to, uh, property to Marion Township's Ag Security Area. Uh, so I will make a motion to approve resolution 2024-14 to add this property, 601 Marion Drive, to the Agricultural Security Area. Second. Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, next is the property maintenance issue at 660 Canal Road. Uh, this is that shack that's owned by AT&T. The residents at 663 and 664 have uh, volunteered to demolish the shed at Boston Township. We previously agreed to that and uh, waived the permit fees associated with that. Um, residents have signed and picked up the permit. They just haven't begun knocking the building down. So I would say just at some point in the next couple of weeks, we send them a letter saying, hey, What's your time frame for this? Do you think you're going to get it this year? Is it going to be next year? Uh, because the permit is only good for you. So we want to make sure that we don't have a renewal situation. Six, six, months. six, six months. Six months? Okay. So they're probably right up against that. So yeah. um, we should reach out and then we're probably going to have to talk to Kraft about renewing it. And then we'll have to discuss at another board meeting when you do again. Um, Next is the Jeremy Troutman Poultry Operation, the letter of credit release. Uh, this is at 991 Southford Road. We have received a request for a full release of the escrow. The project is complete. Um, our engineer is recommending that the full release of credit happen. Um, and there has been a letter of recommendation sent to the final, a financial institution that holds the letter of credit uh, saying that they can prepare the paper. Uh, we'll need to make a motion to release the actual full amount of letter of credit. So I will make a motion to do just that, release the full escrow amount for 991 South Road. Second. Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Um, next is the road crew assigned duties. So we are working on getting a comprehensive, essentially full job description and daily list of duties together around road crew. Um, Jesse has kind of taken a lead on that. And unfortunately, Jesse is not here tonight because he had a death in the family. Um, but that is going to be something that snaps in directly with our employee handbook, which I got stuck in an airport for 15 hours a couple of weeks ago. And so, uh, Colin, I'll send you a, a draft that you can look it over. Uh, I used a couple of townships, a couple of uh, corporations, employee handbooks to kind of assemble something that I think is the best fit. Um, Did you get to read the PSATs, August PSATs? I read some of it. So right, it was great. Well, it was really yeah, good. Yeah, the one I read was good. Yeah. Um, Public Works Association, number 32 on the agenda. Um, we authorize the road crew to go if they want to attend, but uh, none of the road crew are interested or have the ability to attend. So Marion Township is going. Uh, theoretically, if you're a road crew, possibly. Um, <laughs> there's lots of- there's Yeah, lots there's, there's lots of opportunities for that. What we want to, again, promote is training. Um, we have to have our road crew very aware of pens out regulations. Um, uh, there was a, Incident not that long ago uh, with uh, mowing that we needed we need to have a vehicle follow um, anyone that's mowing and or have the signage um, stating it, it and, and have all the debris removed from the road and that particular person didn't want to do that and uh, I don't make up the law and that makes up that law and so we displayed it on the computer screen we gave them several notices about it and 
Uh, we just want to make sure everyone's complying with the law. There are training courses available uh, free, um, and we have the expectation that anyone that comes on to road crew is going to continue to educate themselves just as much as we continue to be updated on the law ourselves. So, yes, sir. You have a I don't know if people were going to the law, but some of the laws are slowly vehicle signs. Should take care of that and flash the lights on the tractor. Yeah. And what's the matter with putting the sign up at the road mowing ahead? Well, you, you're supposed that to. That would be a lot cheaper than going and having someone to drive you. I think a board oh. that's. We don't have that much traffic in our country. So, you're right. overfilling here. Unfortunately, that specific thing with the mower is, is very clearly spelled out as that is not something that we're interpreting. That is a you have to, when you are in the partway and you're mowing in that capacity, you must have a follow the. Well, I think you still be on there with flashing lights and smoking vehicles. Yes, yeah, yeah, I mean, you can sign up appointment. Nothing says we can't do both. Right. We don't have the, the, the follow vehicles. So, so, so if, we, if we don't do that, heads off can find us, and I don't want to get that wrong. Well, there's okay, sir. We're going to shut this down. If it's if it's in the law, we are going to be law abiding, whether we're going to get caught or not. Okay, so thank you for your comment. I think it's ridiculous. So you're entitled to think that. Um, Next is uh, Road Crew. Carl uh, Liptak recently joined the Road Crew and uh, is part time. Um, we should consider maybe hiring him for additional hours or full time, but I think we should wait until Jesse's back and we have a full board to make it. Absolutely. Um, the next item is. Do you have that on? Uh, no. Is it next? Okay. Um, Actually, I do have that. It's back. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just I oh. mixed up the order. That's okay. Um, our current roadmaster, Richard Troutman Jr. Butch, uh, resigned as of September 14th, 2024. Uh, we received that letter of resignation on the 3rd. We need a motion to accept the letter of resignation and send thank you for service. So uh, I will make a motion to, with regret, accept Butch's letter of resignation. Second. Uh, I. Aye. Okay, motion carries. And a motion to send a thank you card for his years of service. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so next is the Fulton Bank credit cards. Uh, at the workshop meeting, we made a motion to remove uh, Butch from the Fulton Bank account and to remove and destroy the card that we use for fuel and other things. Um, and we also made motions at that point to add Secretary Lisa Haggerly and uh, road crew member Carl Liptak to the cards. Um, my stuff still lines up. Item 36 is the Microsoft 365 licenses. Yep. Um, I will call Mike Roberts about that, but- okay. um, As long as we have, yeah. we continue to have Microsoft- Yeah, we, we have it. Into the cloud. Yeah. So everything's in place there. The okay. libraries are built. I just need to have the ladies in the office start copying stuff up. Okay. Um, and if we purchase one additional license, I can, without getting into the technical nuts and bolts, I can change um, the email flow of things around so okay. that it works better. Yes. So I'll I talk to Mike about that. It's, it's, it's about yeah. an eight dollar a month yeah. difference. So uh, we'll we'll do that when we have uh, Jesse back. Okay. But it's it's mostly just technical housekeeping. Okay, that's so, what I need. I need I need to understand. Yes, yeah. better. Uh, next item number thirty seven is the joint comprehensive plan. Um, this is a comprehensive plan of kind of the future prospects of the township and other municipalities on uh, how we want to be and how we want to lay things out. This is something that is supposed to be updated every ten years. I believe is the cycle for that. Um, ours is, I think, about one. So we're close to it. Yes. And uh, we have the opportunity to go into that joint comprehensive plan and have substantial grant funding on it. That same thing with any of the other municipalities that would participate in that. Um, so uh, Attorney McFarland is reviewing the, the agreement on that. We got a chance to do that, or if that's still kind of in flight. But uh, that was the subject of a little bit of discussion of the, the joint uh, zoning. 
Karen. Yeah, we're to, to, what end, to what end? Oh, just that if we're interested in participating. Are the other municipalities interested? Or, yeah. They seem like they were interested in that, but that's that the representation there is not the representation. Right. So I was just curious if you had anything or heard anything. I haven't so okay. That's I, I, I haven't I haven't reviewed the document for Marion Township. I've reviewed the document for other okay. municipalities. Um one of the, one of the issues identified is what happens if all of the participating municipalities don't participate in adopting the plan. And the question becomes, is it actually effective against or for the municipalities that did? Because at least at least in the joint zoning context, an amendment to the ordinance is only effective mm -hmm. if all participants mm -hmm. enact it. So that's one that's one of the questions that I had in, an, in another municipality. Will the township pay thousand a few thousand dollars to update this joint plan but ultimately get no benefit if all the participant participants don't adopt adopt what's finally presented and the, and the issue obviously is that you can't you can't find mm -hmm. okay you can't you can't find all the participants to adopt a plan in that they haven't seen yet in the agreement yes so there, there have been, so there have there has to be some understanding, I think, amongst the participants that everyone wants what's being offered. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just kind of keep an yeah. eye. We have to take a look at what our plan is yeah. and what what we need to work on. It's been okay. a few years since I yeah. Know. It's it's more it's more of a of a tool for accounting to use yeah. as a a long term planning document. The township's good short and long-term planning document is the zoning map because that's where you get your power. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the joint comprehensive plans amongst municipalities may impact the type of grant funds that the county disperses for specific infrastructure and private development. Okay. Okay, moving right along. Uh, next item is the ISOL payroll. Um, this is for informational purposes only, we've got some additional information. Timekeeping, uh, the possibilities of a punch in, punch out clock service system, um, and some details about uh, hiring processes that might benefit us. Um, zoning hearing board, uh, Dave Stavi resigned recently and the board has an opening. We need to fill that ASAP. So if you interested on being on the zoning hearing board again, please let us know. Yeah, it's gonna say you, you or anybody you know has an aptitude for uh, zoning related things, please come in and talk to the secretaries, put your name in the ring, and we'll, we'll interview you for it. Uh, next is the vandalism and graffiti. Uh, there were paintings done at the playground and some vandalism done at the playground. Sorry, I didn't speak to me. Did I skip one? Okay. Oh, I, I apologize. That was me going cross eyed. So, just for everybody who's in the audience, I, I, uh, I had to reorder the agenda that I have because the secretary gave it to me out of order compared to what that was and I had to do it tonight. Um, so if I if I bounce around a little bit, I apologize. Um, so the trick or treat night, and thank you for, for correcting me on that, uh, is uh, set. We did this on the Saturday workshop meeting for Thursday, October 31st from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Have your candy ready. Yes, yeah, so have your candy ready. Um, the, Going back to the vandalism, the graffiti, uh, there was a, a mural done and then some graffiti on the MTCA trailer, um, both of which were signed by the same individual. So we had originally been kind of turning a blind eye to the mural. While it was graffiti, it was constructive graffiti and it looked nice. Uh, but based on the fact that, that same individual took it upon themselves to scroll a very large uh, Trump thing, we find out the end of the no, one, no one has come forward to offer any information. Um, so Treating them both effectively as graffiti. We have the road through paint over it. Mm -hmm. And we ask that anybody in the community that does want to paint a mural or something like that, don't take it upon yourselves. Come to a Saturday workshop meeting or a Thursday night meeting or submit a proposal to the office. Generally, we're receptive to that kind of idea, but you need to have permission before you just go and do it. The artwork was, it was just nice. But, but so that artist, 
talented. Yeah. yeah. So so if that artist if they wanna if they wanna come wanna do stuff, come do something constructive, they should be so yeah. Uh last item is the emergency management coordinator report. Yeah. John John's not here. Now um uh he has some concerns and issues. Um but he, he will bring he will address the board um when he's uh, able to. Okay, and I need to scroll way down to the police report. I do not have a printed copy of that in front of me. Uh, oh, we are entering into the supervisor's comments. So uh the police report for August. Uh, relatively quiet. There were a fair number of citations issued. There were 23 citations, uh, excuse me, 28 citations and 23 traffic stops. Uh, otherwise, it was pretty straightforward for the rest of the items on. There were three three traffic accidents and uh, there was a, a traffic accident tonight on Deck Road that the way the officer was getting here. Um, was everybody okay on that? Yeah, it was a stolen vehicle at downtown city and they fled. <laughs> So if they fled, they were they were not in any bad condition if they were able to run away. Um, um, and then uh, the only other thing I have is the changing of the polling location. So I know things were mailed out, but just as a general reminder, beginning November this year, the polling site will shift from the Marion Township building over to the Marion Township Fire Department engine house. Uh, this is 4127 Conrad Weiser Parkway. For anybody that does not know the address for that, um, and the change was initiated by the uh, county clerks. Um, the only the other thing I had is, Colin, I had a note here, the 4315 Conrad Weiser Parkway, the agricultural security area thing, mm -hmm. we had already adopted the resolution 2024-13 in June. Right. Um, that's completely closed out. We don't have to do anything more with that, right? Oh, correct. Okay. Um, everybody, do you have any comments? No. Okay. Colin. Nothing. Mike. Okay. Can so, I have a comment? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, one day I was uh, walking my chicken houses and I came out of house one and there was a car sitting 50 feet away from my house three. Now, at the end of our driveway, it says this is a vital secure area. No vehicles beyond this point. And if they do come in, they spray their tires, heat trucks, the, the gas, the propane, the flock lady, spray their tires. So I went up there and I looked, and here are two guys walking down alongside of our chicken house. And, and no protective gear on, no plastic boots, nothing. And I went up to them and said, oh, what's, what's the deal here? Oh, we're from the Township Engineer's Office. We're checking measurements. And I have $35,000 in paperwork with met that our measurements are correct. I'm not specifically aware of anybody going out and checking anything. This was a couple months ago for the first inspection for Jeremy Crumman's full uh, chicken barn. And we were requested to go out there by, I believe, your son, Jeremy. Uh, and that was when we went out there. The second time we also went out there with Jeremy, uh, went through, followed him in, did not spray tires, followed Jeremy in, walked around the property, did not wear a suit, had the exact same procedures we did the first time. We were doing that in order to release the letter of credit as it was requested. Yes, but you have to have protective gear on them. We lost a flock of chickens when well, Nelson, when Nelson's over here at Nelson. The property owner was with him, so I'm, I understand. The first time. I understand. No, the first time. They were there with his consent. Yeah, we're. But they were there with his consent. They were announced. It was unannounced. I gave the date and time that I would be there. To who? To where? Jeremy. Well, I'm just saying, you're following the rules. Everything is rules, down to the rules. And here we have a guy driving in our property with avian flu in the area and no protective gear, nothing, and walking around our property. 
And I'm supposed to say, oh, you're following the rules. Okay. If you see somebody on your property, you can ask them to leave, even if they are. I was told they are here from the township engineer's office. They are checking our drop boxes. Okay. So that's what I was told. From what Mike just confirmed, that's fact. It was him. It did say I was there on that ice. It's on the no chicken. So it wasn't as big as he. But the first time we were, the first time we put our, our livelihood in jeopardy there. Yes. Again, I was requested to go out there by the property you and so I did. And I told him, do you realize you're in a biosecure area? I told him that. Oh, well, we're here from the township engineer. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. We were there to release the $97,000 uh, letter of credit as requested by the property owner. So we should know we need not to follow the five security rules. Apparently it does. Have you ever gone to those concerns like that? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Issue for going. Issue. I don't know. You have never made aware of those concerns. I'll stick in those where they pop your hair. Nothing. Nothing. We will make a note to make sure that that does not happen again in the future. But the reality of the matter is, is the visit was initiated by the property owner and there was no instruction or forewarning or fore notice about that requirement. So, Mike. Oh, a sign of the meeting. Okay, I get it. I get it. I was invited onto the property. So. You're invited on the property. You showed up to follow the light. So we're not we're not we're not going to, we're not going to debate this. So yeah, at this point, yeah. there's nothing to debate. What is not in this state? Yeah, yeah, you're right. I don't know where the courthouse is located. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so at this point, uh, do we have a need for executives? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I will make a motion to. Um, Yes. Uh, recess. Recess. Yeah, and say so we will recess the meeting for executive session. Uh, we'll re reconvene to adjourn the meeting upon completion. So thank you everyone for coming out. And if you want to leave your notes with me, I don't know how long the executive session is going to take. So I'll give you a call. Uh, so you just get to pause. Wow. And I need to pause. Yep, we are okay. uh, we are returning, reconvening from executive session. We started the executive session at 8 52 p.m. and have concluded it at 9 26. The executive session was to cover potential litigation, acquisition of real property, personnel matters, and information that is protected by law. Uh, so at this time, uh, I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. It's now nine twenty-six. I'll second that. Moment. You know, just wait, before, wait, wait. before we before we adjourn, yeah. there were a couple a couple matters on the agenda. Not a motion to second, not a couple vote. I do want to just revisit those. Okay. And get get uh, votes on that. And those and those matters were items related to uh, the, the enactment of the long term. Rental ordinance, the adoption of the long term rental ordinance resolution, the adoption of the short term rental resolution, and the uh, adoption of the resolution authorizing the intermunicipal agreement. So, if I could just have a have a, a vote to enact, adopt, and or approve as applicable those actions, um, that, 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 that would be nice. Okay. Um, so the it's I'm sure we've got it on, on tape. So the items that Colin just listed on make a motion to enact them. Enact. Well, you've already you already moved. Yeah. So that's just that's just vote on that. Okay. Well, the roll call on that is Peter. Aye. I mean, aye. Motion carries unanimously. So. No, no, nothing else to do. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So I'll, I'll reissue the motion to adjourn the meeting. Time is now nine twenty eight. Um, Second motion. Okay, we'll call. Aye. Aye. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Everybody.